So welcome. Um, today we are going to talk about analysis of the variance, the ANOVA, and this happens to be a topic in probability and statistics. So let's take some definitions and introduction. So we have so far learned how to compare two population means by testing for the significance between the two means. So you realize that um, before doing the ANOVA, you might have done hypothesis testing. In hypothesis testing, we always try to um, compare two population means. So for instance, you'll be forming your hypothesis and you'll be like, the null hypothesis should be something like mu1 equals mu2. And if you have this as our null hypothesis, then our alternative hypothesis will be mu1 is not equal to mu2. So you realize that in hypothesis testing, this is what you've been trying to do. So you realize that with hypothesis testing, you always consider two, just two um, population means. So you compare them. But in an ANOVA, we extend. So we do more than two. So um, ANOVA helps us to compare several population means. ANOVA is a powerful statistic tool for test of significance and it is an alternative procedure to t-test sorry, for testing whether three or more samples are drawn from the same population. So you realize that when you are doing hypothesis testing, when you use the normal hypothesis testing um, in the t-test, then we always have to consider just two population means where we find our test statistics and we make some um, comparison. So when our test statistics is bigger than our critical value, then we see that um, we have to reject the null hypothesis. But when our test statistics is less than our critical value, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So ANOVA is also used for making those kind of tests. But you know, hypothesis testing just deals with two sample space. So ANOVA extends that, as we've said. So note, the basic purpose of the ANOVA is to test the homogeneity of several population means. So this term here, homogeneity, um, is a very important keyword as it mean. So um, it means that our population means, our several population means, are they equal? So is our mu1 equal to our mu2? Is it equal to our mu3? up to our mu n. So this is what homogeneity stands for here. So we use the ANOVA to check and see if all our population means are equal. Right? So you know it is a test. So when you're going for a test we have to get our hypothesis. So our hypothesis is the null hypothesis is that our H naught is mu one is equal to mu two is equal to up to mu n. So that means you are trying to say that there is no difference between our population means. Do you get it? And our alternative hypothesis states that at least one of our population means is different. So it could be that when you have, for instance, um, three population means, you know, our null hypothesis will be mu1 will be equal to mu2, which will be equal to mu3. But the alternative will say that out of these, it could be that mu1 is equal to mu2, but they are not equal to mu3. Or it could be that mu1 is equal to mu3, but it's not equal to mu2. So at least one of them is different from the rest. So that's what the alternative hypothesis is. Right? So that's our hypothesis. So the ANOVA, it is the procedure whereby the total variation in the same Measured response is subdivided into components that can be attributed to recognizable sources. Um, so, yeah, you get to know the sources very soon. You get to know it very soon. So, um, mostly the sources we are talking about is the regression or the treatment. Then we have the error. Yeah. So, and we have the total. So this gives you the sum of square regression, which is SSR, and some call it sum of square due to the treatment or SST. This is called sum of square due to the error or some call it sum of square due to the residual residual sum of square. So this is RES, and this is the total sum of square TSS, and some also call it 
some of square root also so SST. Okay. So these are all notations and there are sources that we are talking about. So the total variation is divided into residual or sum of squares. Residual or error sum of squares, so SSC, as we said, that, and the sum of squared regression, SSR. So that means that our SST here is equal to our SSE plus SSR. And please, when it comes to the notations here, um, be very, very careful because, you know, some booze, instead of using SST for the sum of squared total, they rather say total sum of squared. So it will be TSS. So mostly you have to be very careful about the book you are using and the notation they use. So try to understand what the thing stands for and what it does and not the notation because you might be confused if you don't see what you know in a certain book. So note that this is the same as the sum of square due to the treatment. That's the sum of square due to the regression. So hence you have SST equals SSR plus SSE. So where our SST is the sum of squared total, our SSR is sum of squared regression, and our sum of squared SSE is sum of squared error. Okay. So note that in some books you find TSS will be called SST plus SSE. So here you realize that with the same sum of squared total, here we are calling total sum of squared. So we're using TSS instead of SST, but they do the same thing and they mean the same thing. And here, instead of sum of squared regression, here we're using sum of squared due to the word treatment. So it is SST here. So you see, this SST is different from this SST. That's why you have to know what it does. And there's our sum of squared error. And in some books, you see sum of squared residual. So you see some small res here. Right, so that's the explanation here. So our TSS is total sum of squares. Our SST is sum of squared due to treatment. And our SSE is sum of squares error or residual. So, this is a formula for SST or TSS. So, summation of y minus the mean of y cap. And this is our um, formula for finding for our SST. This is our formula for finding for our SSE. But note that um, there are other formulas that we can use to find our TSS, our SST, and our SSE. So, God willing, in our next video, we will talk about those formulas too. And later... We also talk about how to calculate our TSS, SST, and SSE because we always be asked to calculate them. And later on, we learn how to construct the ANOVA table using these values. So thank you very much. I'm Bredo Krenrino.